Hey everybody, this is Papa Jean. I'm glad you're listening tonight. Uh, I'm going to a new format, I think. I'm not sure it's going to happen or not. Uh, we're doing some testing. This is the beta test to try to videotape my podcast and produce a video that is exactly what's going to come out on the podcast. Uh, yeah, it's, it's new turf for me. I've, I've not done this particular thing before. It may be well received and, uh, and it may not, you know, as you can see already. And if you know me in person and you exercise with me in person, uh, I'm a very demonstrative speaker. I talk with my hands. Uh, instead of being mostly Irish, I might be part Italian, and I hope that doesn't sound racist in any kind of way, but uh, I'm a person who talks with his hands, and uh, I did the same thing as a public speaker and a, a person who taught seminars for many, many years of my life, about 20, 20 years being on a podium somewhere in some town, maybe in Mississippi, maybe in Florida, uh, maybe in Washington State, maybe in California, and sometimes, believe it or not, even at sea on a Navy uh, combatant ship because, uh, you know, I was, a, I was a facilitator, an educator, and an instructor for the Navy uh, for many years, at least over half of my Navy career of, of 20 years. So, you know, we're going to, we're experimenting with lighting, with video, uh, with microphones. Uh, I use a studio set headphones because uh, I, it, it helps me hear myself and you're, you're probably thinking, oh, come on, Gene, really? Surely you've got to be sick and tired of hearing yourself. Well, no, uh, but, uh, you know, I have to make sure the audio quality is there before I put out a, a videotape or anything like that. And I hope you understand that. Uh, during the years we've been doing Pushing 60 Aside podcast, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I'd put a podcast out and people would say, I couldn't hear you, man. I turned my phone all the way up as high as I could get it. And I, you still sounded like you were way off in a distant room uh, uh, talking into a tin can or something like that. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so we try to get this right before we release uh, audio or video content. And so this is part of that process. And if, if you're along for the ride, thank you. As you can see, I do not dress up for doing... Uh, uh, Facebook Live. I do not dress up. Wouldn't it be funny if I showed up here one night wearing a uh, suit and a tie? Y'all wouldn't listen to me because you know I'm the guy that uh, is here to pump you up and uh, make you lift weights and make you reach and swim and, and do finger exercises and all that crazy stuff we do together. But uh, we're going to see how this goes. If this works, this could happen two ways. One, I could record these short video segments and just put them straight on my Facebook group and and you could listen to the whole thing there. Uh, you may not be interested in doing that. There's no rule that says you have to. If you get enough of me three days a week in our classes, that's fine. And, 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 and I respect that. Frankly, I don't think I would like to listen to me every single day. And, and that's just being honest with you. And uh, I don't want to wear out my welcome either. But if this is a good way to reach you, motivate you, inspire you, stay connected with you, uh, let you know there are people that, are, that truly do care about you, about your health, about your fitness, and, uh, you know, and, and want to stay connected with you. Um, you know, some of you've had surgeries. Uh, some of you've had cancer scares, uh, even in the last six months. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to track you down. I'm going to ask you, hey, how you doing? How you feeling? How's your rehab going? Um, uh, what's up with you? Or maybe I missed you in a class last week. And, you know, sometimes I find out somebody had COVID or they had the flu or they've had this uh, a bronchitis. Uh, there's been a cold, a regular old rhinovirus cold that's gone around. A lot of us have gotten it. Uh, it seems like it's, it, it sets on like a regular cold, but then three weeks later, we're still, and, <coughs> and, and we're wondering, okay, okay, that's, that's long enough. I never had any fever. I didn't test positive for COVID. I didn't have the flu for sure, but this is a bad cold. And, 
you know, we don't know where those come from, but uh, somebody had to give it to us. It didn't come in the U.S. mail. So anyway, I'm experimenting with some video formats and some uh, uh, some of the content that goes out on the Pushing 60 Aside podcast. And uh, this is just part of my adventure. And I'm glad to have you along with me, especially those of you that have done Fitbit challenges with me over the years. And I'm talking to the Weeks family up in in uh, Michigan, uh, my Canadian listeners like uh, France and Dale uh, and Linda, a, a new one. Uh, you know, you've been hanging around with this old guy for some of you almost, I don't know, how long has it been? Nine, ten years? Something like that. Uh, some of you knew me when I was still losing weight. <laughs> so we go back a ways, don't we? So anyway, the point of having a Facebook group and doing podcasts is about uh, staying connected with people that I have come to truly love and respect over the years. And uh, and some of you even more recently. Um, and some of you are surprised that I'm into all of the things that I'm into uh, and still teach fitness classes too. I love doing this stuff. I mean, you you have something that you get fired up and you just passionate about. Maybe you're a musician. Maybe you're a, a teacher in your church or synagogue. Um, you know, um, maybe you work with youth. I don't, I don't know what all of you do. Maybe you're an avid golfer. And I'm not quite up to being an avid golfer, but I'm a regular golfer with an irregular swing. And, and that's pretty creative, I think. Uh, but anyway, this this uh, little video segment here tonight is to let y'all know that uh, we're going to see about the possibility of recording live, like I'm doing here now, the podcast. And uh, I've sometimes said in the podcast, if you could see me right now, you would think that I was standing in front of a an auditorium with uh, uh, 50, 75, 100 listeners and walking around the room and talking uh, to the listeners. And that's how I do in my mindset when I'm doing the podcast. It's as if I'm talking to you personally. And, um, and the goal is to reach people with pearls of wisdom and pearls of inspiration. I use that pearl analogy quite a bit because uh, a wise man once told me that life is like collecting pearls. And uh, now I'm not going to be a barber bush wearing uh, uh, three strands of pearls around my neck, but suppose that pearls represent uh, tidbits of, of wisdom. And you find one over here, you find one over there, and you just keep stringing them together throughout the course of your life. And each one of those pearls represents a great lesson that you learned that perhaps dramatically changed your life for the better. And you got wiser, you know, with each pearl that you collected. And, and before long, you had a big, long string uh, that represents your life. I think about some ladies that are in my uh, early class that I, they, I think some of them have two or three strands uh, <laughs> of pearls of wisdom, uh, pearls of wisdom, not because uh, they're the smartest people on the earth, but because they're full of wit and wisdom and charm and uh, and still have the capacity for friendship and grace and benevolence and charity. And I think they're just wonderful people. And uh, I know sometimes I may be a bit much to take. Don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I am who I am. Uh, you know, I'd like to think that you, the guy you meet today and the guy that you see next week is pretty much rock solid, the same guy. And, uh, and, and, and I love working with seniors, even though I'm technically one myself. I like working with seniors because uh, as a, a friend of mine, an author named Susie Parrish once told me, she said, you may not be in a pulpit anymore, but you're still in ministry. It's just a different kind of ministry. And I think about that quite a bit. Uh, Susie may have been 100% right because um, I have found that uh, in working with groups of seniors in fitness that uh, I grow to genuinely uh, embrace these people almost as an extended family, a congregation of sorts, and uh, I worry about them a little, just just a little. 
I check on them after they've had surgeries or a, a death in the family, things like that. I do home visits sometimes, so really it's not much different than when I was uh, uh, in the pulpit or, or doing uh, chaplaincy work for Baptist hospitals in uh, Northwest Florida. Uh, you get to know people, you get to care about people, and um, and I think about some of my seniors, especially that are are widowed and widowers. Uh, I think about them a lot and how their life dynamic has changed because their partner is gone, and um, and they've had to figure out how they were going to make ends meet and how they were going to thrive and how they were going to survive, how they were going to pay bills, um, uh, who was going to take care of them on their sick days uh, when suddenly their life partner is forever gone, and uh, the grief that they had to go through, the sadness they still endure because they lost maybe not just a spouse, but given our ages, a lot of us have lost children, and that is that is heart-wrenching. And it's, uh, it, it, you know, I've not had to go through that yet, but my grandfather told me it was the hardest thing he ever went through in losing one of his own children. So in the classes, and oftentimes when they first come in, I make a big to-do sometimes about uh, our seniors when they're coming into the class. I greet them like they're a long-lost friend because I think about, some of them are very socially engaged. Some are not. They live by themselves or uh, maybe they live in uh, a senior living community. Um, some of them uh, don't drive anymore. Some of them can't drive. Some of them are living near the poverty level. I know these things, but, you know, if nobody's ever glad to see you, what a what a terribly lonely experience. And so, uh, I I, uh, I probably go overboard just a, a little sometimes in greeting people, but it's because I'm genuinely happy in my heart of hearts to see them again. I really am, and, and you can't fake that. People see through fake, and, uh, and so I oftentimes tell them that I love them, that seems a little weird, even to me. But if it's true, is it okay to say? I think it is. I I, I really do. I think it is. Um, you know, because uh, as we get older, our family connections sometimes get thinner and thinner. Our visitations with family uh, get fewer and fewer. And uh, some people can go long periods of time without ever, ever hearing uh, somebody else tell them sincerely that they are loved. And I'm not talking, you know, God loves you. And, that, and that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, God does love you. But uh, to have another human being that uh, you don't owe anything to, that you're not paying, uh, or that, you know, nothing, nothing like that. But to have that person tell you with a smile on their face that they love you and they're glad to see you again, um, you know, that's powerful stuff. I don't care who you are. I don't care if it's me, uh, you know, and uh, and so I make a habit. And I hope this doesn't sound like I'm trying to brag on myself because that's, that's not me, uh, but I make a habit of... Uh, well, especially when my early class is leaving, you know, I pat people on the back and I tell them they did really good today, if they really did good, and most of them do really good in the classes, and 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 I sometimes will uh, linger just a bit and say I'm really proud of you for coming to the class today, and I just want you to know I love you, you know, and it's awkward, you know. Sometimes I get some kind of weird looks when I say that because they're not expecting that. But uh, I think it's a it's a powerful expression of how I feel in our relationship as fitness instructor and exercise client. And, you know, maybe it's like nothing you've ever heard of, 
But I know that I've gone to churches before where uh, there wasn't much expression of true affection. You know, you go through the obligatories of handshakes and, well, how you doing today, Brother Fleming? Good to see you. Yeah, I'm doing fine, you know, doing pretty good. My goats are fine. My tractor's fine. My pecan trees are fine. Uh, you know, things like that. But uh, really shallow, shallow conversation sometimes, just social graces. And there's nothing wrong with those. We, we do those. But uh, uh, so I'm experimenting with uh, doing the videos um, uh, to just to see if... If I'm truly motivated to put out video snippets that perhaps will inspire you, stimulate you, uh, encourage you to take the very best care of yourself. Uh, I've said on the podcast a thousand times, you are doctor number one in your life. You're your best shrink. You're your best uh, heartbreak healer, uh, your your best physician, because nobody knows your body like you know it. Nobody knows your hurt like you know it. Nobody knows how to pray uh, your personal issues like you know how to pray through those issues. Nobody knows your stress level like you know your stress level. Nobody knows your anxiety, your fears, things like that. And so doing these videos may be a way to reach people that I genuinely care about and say, you know, uh, I don't know who else is in your corner, but by golly, I'm in your corner and I believe in you and I want you to have the best possible healthy days ahead of you and I'm willing to walk alongside you to accomplish that goal. So anyway, this is the first stab at doing one of these uh, Facebooks um, videos like this. I don't even know if Facebook will let me upload it because it's long. Uh, if not, I'll throw this stuff on uh, YouTube YouTube, and post the link on uh, Papa G's Fitness, and we'll just see how it goes. And, um, you know, if it's well-received, I will continue to do it. Uh, the one thing I don't want to do is waste your time, uh, and I don't want you spending more time online uh, just, just to kill time and to and to you know, watch this and watch that and read this and read that. And, and you know, sometimes the phone can lay there in our palm and, and we get, you know, we're, we're doing this all the time or scrolling up. And, and then if you see me when I'm typing something, it's like, tat, 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 tat. And I spend, uh, you know, probably way too much time online myself. It's one, it's one thing I'm looking to reduce as I go forward in time and adding a video component to the podcast and putting that on YouTube, I'm just going to have to see. I'm just going to have to see. One thing I know is if it starts to stress me out, it's gone. You know, it's, uh, it's not worth it. I don't need to make a living doing this. I probably could, don't want to, don't need the money necessarily, but uh, I'm not going to get to this age and then just start piling more and more responsibilities and obligations on myself because anytime you're producing content for social media, it's work. It's work. And sometimes I can record uh, uh, 30 minutes worth of uh, audio for the podcast, and uh, when I play it back through, it's just junk. It's just junk. It doesn't flow well. I stammer and stutter. Um I get tongue-tied. Sometimes I change accents and I go from what you're hearing now to a South Alabama country boy and I lapse into that conversation, you know, just like I talked when I was a kid. And I don't talk like that in everyday speech. I don't know where that comes from. But I can laugh at myself and I think that's an important attribute to have. Uh, being senior only gets harder if we take ourselves too seriously. And that's probably an explanation for all the frivolity we have in the classes and some of the crazy things that you have seen me do. And, uh, and I hope that's okay. Uh, you know, if you laugh at me because you think I'm crazy or you laugh because you're having fun, that's fine by me. Because you know what we did? 
we lived together for about an hour and we took care of our bodies, we took care of our spirits, and we took care of our minds. Until next video, I'll see you.